for joining me today for another Bible study. I'm teaching in the Gospel of Mark, and the uh, passage is in chapter 7, verses 24 through 37. So I want to thank you for joining me here, and as we, as we look at these uh, slides today here, our title is Includes, and it's from Mark chapter 7, verses 24 through through 37. And before we get too much further, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And I want to uh, uh, ask him to just bless this. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so very much for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for the Gospel of Mark. Thank you for revealing to us who Jesus is. And I pray that as we study your word, We'll begin to realize how amazing it is that the Son of God has, has come to this earth and lived among us. Uh, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've conquered death. You've paid the penalty for our sin. And you offer to each and every one of us who receive you by faith eternal life. Help us to just fathom the magnitude of what you're offering to mankind. And help us to love you with everything in us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Well, there's so much to consider here. I'll start start setting the stage. In the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, we see that Jesus is introduced as the Son of God. And you can't overestimate the importance of the Son of God having come into this world. Uh, he's going to perform many different miracles. They're displays of his power. They're proofs of his deity. These things were done uh, publicly. Uh, many, of, um, many, many people were eyewitnesses to the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. Uh, many experienced healings. Many experienced deliverance from demons. Uh, many heard his teachings. Some were literally raised from the dead. And uh, the Gospel of Mark is a pretty fast-moving account of what happens when the Son of God comes to this world and begins to reveal himself to mankind. So there you have it. Let's look at the, let's look at this together as we uh, as we go through uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter seven, verse twenty four through thirty seven. Basically, an overview of the lesson: Jesus extends mercy to all people, whosoever will call upon his name shall be saved. Uh, offer the hope of Jesus to social outcasts. All of us who believe in Christ are to offer Jesus to the whole world. Preach the gospel to every person in every nation and offer the hope of Jesus. All mankind is faced with the prospect of death and no one is going to escape it. But when you study the gospels, you see Jesus himself has come into this world become fully human as as well as fully God at all times and then he died on a cross uh, it looked to for all practical purposes like he was he was finished but on the third day he rose from the dead he was resurrected and uh, he offers all who will receive him by faith the opportunity to join him on the other side of physical death in an eternal kingdom so we offer hope of Jesus to social outcasts, you know, or all people actually, and we want to show individual care to people with physical challenges. Jesus healed uh, the disabled, uh, no matter what the disability was, he was able to, to heal them completely. So we want to show care to those that ha may have disabilities or physical challenges of any kind, and sooner or later uh, most of us are going to have something there. Well, Jesus is the one to turn to, 
And we need to remain focused on the redemption that's provided to all through Jesus alone. Redemption meaning complete deliverance from the penalties for the sins and uh, uh, acceptance into the kingdom of God where you have eternal life and can enjoy God's presence forever. Well, the passage begins here in chapter 7 of Mark, verse 24, and the dejected is the title. He got up and departed from there to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know, but he could not escape notice. Instead, immediately after hearing about him, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Gentile, not a Jew. She was a Syrophoenician by birth, and she was asking him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, Let the children be fed first, because it isn't right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Now, from what I can tell, this uh, uh, understanding here is the little pet dogs that you would find in a home. It's not the derogatory insult that it sounds like. Uh, the Jews, the typically the Jews might think of the unbelieving Gentiles as dogs, which was really a derogatory term. But in this case, it's more like a, uh, a puppy, uh, someone uh, that's, that's maybe under the table uh, in the master's house. But it's not, it's not the total insult that you would think. And the woman, uh, she replied to him, Lord, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And then he told her, because of this reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. When she went back to her home, she found her child lying on the bed, and the demon was gone. So we now have Jesus listening to the plea of a mother of a demon-possessed child. There was no hope for that child without Jesus' assistance. So Jesus heard her plea, and then he listened to her response. She believed he could deliver her daughter. And Jesus had uh, already fed a multitude of people. He had been arguing with religious leaders. And uh, the, Jesus was trying to sort of get off the grid and go out for a while just to relax and take the disciples. And even in Tyre, that was a Gentile area north of Galilee, he was recognized and sought out. So the woman came uh, and asked Jesus basically to heal her daughter. Uh, this daughter had an evil spirit, and uh, Mark described her as Syrophoenician, and she uh, she was not the target group of Jesus's ministry. He was coming to minister to the Jews, and he basically shared that with her. Um, but she's begging him for help. And Jesus' compassion, his heart is touched. And Jews were often referring to Gentiles as dogs. That's a pretty derogatory term for wild dogs, maybe mongrels. But Jesus used a different word for this lady. It suggested puppies or house pets. And Jesus basically told her he was called to feed the children, which he was talking about the Jews, the children of Israel. He's called to feed them and not the house pets. Well, the woman accepted the truth of what Jesus was saying, but she pointed out that prioritizing the Jews didn't necessarily exclude the uh, Gentiles. Um, she saw maybe that Jesus could reach out to the Gentiles as well, and she had high hopes that he would indeed. Well, Jesus told her that because of her response, uh, her expression of faith, and she, she knew he could deliver her daughter, he responded to her and did what she asked. And Mark's um, original readers, well, they would have associated this account with uh, God's plans for salvation for the non-Jews or the Gentiles, as we're called. Anyone that's not Jewish is a Gentile, and God does intend to reach out to 
all people everywhere, not just the Jews. And here's an uh, an incident where a Gentile approached Jesus during his earthly ministry, and he received her request, and he released her daughter from the demon possession that she uh, was experiencing. So it's an amazing, an uh, absolutely amazing thing there when you think about it. And um, we see that the demon was gone. And then this is a summary of chapter 7, verses 24 through 30. Jesus entered a house in the Gentile region of Tyre as part of a futile effort to go unnoticed by the crowds that hounded him. I can't imagine what life was like for him. Uh, everywhere he went, he was essentially mobbed. And a Gentile woman approached Jesus and asked him simply to heal her daughter. When Jesus pointed out actually that the Jews should take priority over the Gentiles, the woman agreed. However, she added that the priority did not exclude the Gentiles completely. Um, and Jesus affirmed her reply. And he declared that the woman, um, he declared that the demon had left her daughter. The woman returned home to find that the demon was gone, just as, just as Jesus said. Well, let's move to the next section here. This is to do with the deaf. Um. So he took him away from the crowd. I'm sorry. Let's see here. I missed a slide. All right. All right. So now in the next section, Mark chapter 7, verse 31 through 35, we see that Jesus is now going to leave the region of Tyre. He he'd cast this demon out of this woman's daughter. Now he's leaving the region of Tyre. He went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee through the region of the Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who also had difficulty speaking and begged Jesus to um, lay his hand on him. So he took him away from the crowd in private, and after putting his fingers in the man's ears and spitting, he touched his tongue, and looking up to heaven, he sighed deeply and said to him, Ephphatha, that is, be opened. Okay, And immediately, his ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak clearly. All right. Jesus has just performed an absolutely amazing miracle. A man that was uh, unable to hear and unable to speak has been ministered to by Jesus Christ the Lord. Jesus healed his deafness and enabled him to speak. And I can't imagine uh, the uh, uh, joy that this man would, would experience. The local people now in this region recognized uh, Jesus, and um, they'd already heard about the fact that he's doing amazing uh, miracles in, in many places. So they're they're chasing him. He can get. He can't get time even to to rest and recuperate. But uh, Jesus is more than willing to minister to the people. He's teaching and demonstrating through supernatural supernatural uh, acts that he is indeed the Son of God. Well, they brought this deaf man to Jesus, and uh, Jesus basically took the man away from the crowds. He did, he wasn't there to put on a show. His concern was simply to heal this man. He wasn't trying to build some big earthly ministry. He's just trying to trying to take care of this one man. So he took him away from from the crowds, and um, in a combination of actions, Jesus just simply touched the man's ears, and then he uh, touched his tongue. Apparently, Jesus uh, spit on his finger and touched the man's tongue, and these things. Sim symbolized uh, opening his ears and loosening his tongue. And Jesus also looked to heaven, and uh, he's relying upon God's power to do these things. 
in the Aramaic word that Jesus spoke, if fatha means be opened, and that is exactly what happened to the man's ears, and his tongue was enabled to speak, and we um, we know we see Jesus's power being revealed here. I can't imagine what kind of power is necessary to heal someone who's deaf or to enable someone to speak and many other examples of, to cast out a demon, something from the uh, demonic realm that's possessed a child. Just a word from Jesus and that demon fled. Jesus uh, in the Gospel of Mark has already demonstrated the ability to supernaturally multiply bread and fish and feed the crowds. You know, as we as we read this account, there's so many uh, supernatural occurrences that you might get a little, um, uh, well, overwhelmed by what you see there. But Mark is reporting precisely what happened. He's like a reporter telling us, this is what I saw. Peter was uh, most likely Mark's source, and Peter was there and present during the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. He saw Jesus heal vast numbers of people, and it was hard to ignore the, the crowds, the rush of the crowds. Uh, if Jesus had not been effective in healing, if he weren't really able to do these miracles, the crowds would never have uh, developed. He would have just been, uh, uh, well, they would have scoffed at him if he had not demonstrated real uh, power. The Pharisees wouldn't have really cared about him because uh, no one would have followed Jesus if he had not demonstrated this supernatural power. The Pharisees couldn't um, couldn't accept Jesus because they were losing their crowds. The people were stopping the following the, the Jewish rabbis because they wanted to go to Jesus who had the power to heal them, the power to cast out uh, demons or to heal any disorder and he could supernaturally feed them. Um, they, they were just becoming aware this man is, is authoritative and powerful, and they heard his teaching, and they understood something is new and different. You know, when I met Jesus myself back in uh, 1998, I, I was overwhelmed. Uh, so up until that point, I had only known about him, and I was really quite skeptical. But uh, in 1998, as I read the Gospel of John all the way through, and then I read it through halfway the second time, I actually encountered Jesus Christ the Lord. Now, I couldn't see him with my physical eyes or hear him with my ears, but in some, some way, I knew from that point forward, he is alive, he's real, and he is the Lord God, and... Um, I gave him my life. I committed to him. And I'm thankful. I've never, ever regretted committing to Jesus. I've regretted some of the things I've done as a sinner, but I've never regretted giving my life to Christ Jesus. So I'm thankful for him. Well, let's move on to the next portion here. Um, let me get down here to this. <laughs> Alrighty. The diff. Here's a summary of what we see. Uh, after this man was healed, then Jesus headed to the Decapolis region, the Ten Cities, where a deaf and mute person was brought to him. And just matter of fact, Jesus healed him by placing his fingers in the man's ears and touching the man's tongue with spit on his fingers. And then um, we, uh, we see Jesus... Uh, ordering everyone to tell no one about it. Um, he ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more they proclaimed it. It's a hard secret to keep here. Um, Jesus ordered everyone to, uh, uh, to be aware of the healing, to remain silent, and they wanted to, uh, uh, <laughs> he wanted to be able to conduct his teaching ministry but their, their interest in the healings and their excitement that he generated caused uh, everybody to just tell more, and it was hard to. There was no hiding the fact that this man was healed. Uh, the uh, Syrophoenician woman whose daughter had the demon exercised, well, I'm sure she went around telling everybody, and uh, Jesus wanted 
uh, to be able to teach and explain his purpose for coming, but there was so much, so much going on um, that it was hard to get, hard to get a, a following. Uh, it's hard to get peace from uh, all that he'd done. But I'm going to show this slide one more time here on that, just to show you. Uh, he ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more they proclaimed it, and the net result. They were extremely astonished and said he's done everything well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. They were acknowledging what he had done. And then Jesus ordered everyone aware of the healing to remain silent. But that only made the people share about it more. They were astonished by the works done by Jesus, especially his ability to make the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. And that brings us to a key doctrine in Scripture. It has to do with mankind, man. And it's an amazing thing when you think about it. Man, the sacredness of human personality, is evident in that God created man in his own image. And in that Christ died for man, therefore every person of every race possesses full dignity and is worthy of respect and Christian love. Uh, this goes back to the foundational doctrinal truths of Scripture, the, the concept of man. We are extraordinarily valuable because we're all created in the image of God, and we have our uh, disabilities, we have all the uh, disadvantages of growing old and feeble, we have sickness, we have been... Uh, corrupted by sin, and we're facing death, uh, mankind as it stands is in uh, desperate need of a Savior, and without a Savior, we, we just live until we die. And some, some people have a very, very brief life. Some babies never exit the womb. They die in the womb. When children die, teenagers die, young adults, death hits everybody, different ages. And there's no, um, no way to know when your time is coming. But the person can hear this gospel and take great hope in knowing that God loves us in spite of our sin and in spite of all of our uh, disabilities and uh, all, the, the, the dis, all the things that have just set us aside from God, our sins have, have separated us from him. Well, he longs for us to be reunited. He wants us to be with him. And if we'll simply acknowledge that we we need him, we need to understand, we need to acknowledge that we've been marred by sin, we are sinners, we need someone to step in and uh, take the penalty for our sins, and that one would be Jesus Christ the Lord. Well, he, he presents himself as the Savior, and we need to recognize him as the Savior that he is, and then we need to... Um, uh, invite him or, or receive him uh, as our Lord and as our Savior. And those who do, why well, he will absolutely forgive and, uh, and restore you to full uh, fellowship with God. It says we'll literally become children of God. So let me show you these uh, doctrinal truths and some of the verses to back them up. Man, the, this is the doctrine of man in Scripture, the sacredness of human personality is evident in that God created man in his own image and in that Christ died for man and therefore every person of every race possesses full dignity and is worthy of respect and Christian love folks if they're human they're worthy of respect Jesus Christ has died for all people it is not his will that any should perish. It is his will that all come to repentance and, and faith in him. If we go back to the very beginning of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, here's the origins of man. It's good to remember who made us, who created us. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the cattle 
and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. And we have uh, the next verse here, uh, verse, 27, uh, verse 27, Genesis 1, 27. God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. And Jesus Christ has come, has come to restore us to the full uh, image, the fullness of the image in which God created us. We will literally become like Jesus. If we receive Jesus by faith, um, Jesus has actually become a life-giving spirit and he, um, he, he wants to reveal himself here to us. Let's see, I'm having a little trouble. All right. Jesus Christ was crucified. He died on that cross. They buried his body. Uh, during that time, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. So his spirit went to be with the Father. But on the third day, God raised Jesus from the dead. His spirit uh, and body uh, became united again, and he's fully alive now and forever. There is a human being who is fully God, seated on the throne in heaven. That is my Savior. His name is Jesus the Lord. Um, he offers himself to everyone, and he has the ability to uh, heal us from any kind of disability or disorder we may have. If we're deaf, he can uh, open our hearing. If we're blind, he can make us see. If we're dead, he can resurrect us. No matter what has happened to our physical bodies, he has the power, and he's demonstrating that here in these Gospels. He has the power to heal everything. Well, he's also resurrecting the dead people in, in many places in Scripture. So he's shown he has power over death. He exhibits his power to cast out demons. In this passage we've looked at today, a woman had a child who was afflicted by a demon, unclean spirits, and her life was absolutely miserable. But, but Jesus just simply spoke, and this, this demon left this child. So whatever's involved in the spirit realm that torments people, I think there are many uh, demons active in the world today, and they're active in things like uh, drug addiction and alcoholism and uh, uh, child abuse or molestation. All these perversions are... Uh, the results of demons uh, working in and through people. Well, God's come to set people free from all of that, and he's offered to heal us and to set us free from the demonic, set us free from the consequences of our own willful sin, and provide us with eternal life. So, to me, there's, um, there's infinite hope and absolute certainty in trusting Jesus Christ, and that's why I do these... Uh, these Bible studies, I want everybody to know about him. Everyone is free to evaluate Jesus for themselves and see if he's worthy of uh, you following him, then please do. If you don't see it, then let me just challenge you to read carefully the accounts of Scripture and look and see what happened to the people that did follow Jesus, uh, how their lives were changed, how they were willing to literally die for Jesus, that's a pretty strong indication that they saw something worthy of uh, sacrificing their life on earth. Um, I have had uh, many encounters with the Lord, and I've experienced his protection, uh, his provision, uh, insights he's given me. There's so many things. It's, it's hard to explain, but he's a real person. And in prayer, I can talk to him, and he can talk to me, and he'll prompt me, and I was not aware of anything like that up until age 42. For the last 25 years, I've, I've known the Lord, actually 26 years now, I've known him, and uh, it's a different life. It's a whole different life, and I'm enjoying it, and I want to share that life of Christ with others. You don't need me, anyone else. You do need Jesus Christ. So listen carefully for, for him. Well, I'm going to, Go back to that slide, and then we'll go to the next one here. And the, that we just looked at some passages in Genesis, the first book of the Bible. Now we're going to the very last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter seven, verse nine, and we're 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 considering about man. And uh, this is uh, after this is the Apostle John. He's exiled to the Isle of Patmos, 
and he's having visions of the end of time, basically the end of the world. And he says, After these things I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no one could count, from every nation and all tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, that's Jesus, clothed in white robes, and palm branches were in their hand. And they cry out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. So, the, um, the people in that day will be praising the Lord Jesus Christ. They'll come from all over the world. Every tribe, every tongue, every nation, every people group will be represented there. These are people who believed Jesus Christ is the Son of God. They, they received him by faith. Uh, they understood themselves to be sinners. They acknowledged him as the one and only who could die and pay the penalty for their sins, and also the one and only who could grant them eternal life. Think about that. To have each day just another day of life is a tremendous blessing. I'm thrilled now with each day that I have. I've had over 25,000 days so far, and I've come to really treasure each day. Jesus has the authority and the power to grant us an infinite number of days. Uh, eternal life is how it's referred to in Scripture, and uh, it's hard to grasp the the uh, magnitude of these promises made to us by Christ. But I'm going to believe him. I'm going to take him at his word. I'll be the first to admit I do not understand everything, how he does things, and but I know I can trust him. I know him. I'm uh, trusting him pretty much like a child. I have simple faith in him, and I'm sure uh, it's well placed. Well, I would like to uh, continue just a little bit further in that slide presentation here. And as we move forward, this is a summary of the entire lesson. Jesus extends mercy to all people. And you and I who believe, we can offer the hope of Jesus to social outcasts. Everyone is free to make up their own minds concerning Jesus, but we should offer him to everyone for their sake in hopes that they'll come to believe in him and uh, enjoy the salvation only he can offer and don't leave anyone out in the presentations offer it to everyone we'll show individual care to people with physical challenges there are many i visited in nursing homes and hospices and i've seen so many physical disabilities and i know maybe not immediately but at some point each one of those People who receive Jesus Christ by faith will have a new body without any uh, physical challenges, no disabilities of any kind. And we want to remain focused on the redeem redemption that is provided to all through Jesus alone. And essentially, everyone who, uh, everyone who comes to faith in Christ, you receive him by faith, he will do what he's promised. He offers you and I all the opportunity to join him in his in his eternal kingdom well folks i love you all and i i hope that these things help i um i would challenge you just take a look at the gospel of mark read the all 16 chapters and and think about what's being given there and i pray that god will open everyone's spiritual eyes and ears uh, just as he dealt with this this man that couldn't hear in this passage he can uh, he can enable us to hear him with our own spirits from within. He can place his spirit within us and we can hear him clearly. Well, may God richly, richly bless you here. And I pray that uh, this uh, lessons will bless you. Mm -hmm.